Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Justine Corley. Um, I'm the Associate Director for Scholarly Communication and Repository Services at UQ Library. I'm here with my colleague, Elena Danilova, who's the Senior Manager for um, Scholarly Communications. And we're going to talk to you today about how we position um, openness at UQ to encourage our researchers to consider applying an open approach to their research. So I'm going to share some information with you. And then after that, um, Elena is going to um, have a little chat and demonstrate a tool that we've developed um, in recent times to assist our researchers, our researchers, sorry, with applying a strategic approach to um, scholarly publishing and considering open access as part of that. Um, but first, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners um, and their custodianship of the lands that we're presenting from today. Elena and I are on the lands of the Yagara and the Tarawal people in Brisbane. Um, I want to start initially by, um, in a similar way to, to Janet, actually, to say that, um, just to set the scene, there's just been so much happening in the open research space um, over the last several years, particularly including in the, the open access um, publishing space. And so this slide really is to acknowledge that nothing sits in isolation and that all the threads that relate to open as it applies to research are intrinsically tied uh, to a whole lot of different things. For example, uh, you know, scholarly publishing feeds into university rankings and researchers rely on metrics to advance their careers. Uh, we know that era is changing, but we're not sure yet on the detail of that. And we know that there's a heightened awareness around using um, metrics responsibly. There's also the sort of tension between commercialization and open access or open research goals. So not everything can be um, openly shared. And the same really applies to considerations of Indigenous knowledge um, and perspectives that, that influence decisions on data management um, and sharing. We know that we're in an uncertain environment currently waiting for the outcome of the Australian Universities Accord, and we have read and publish deals in place. We know this is a transitional step towards a pay to publish future, but we're not quite sure how it will all work yet. And we might even have some concerns about the intentions of the publishers um, in all of this, as well as kind of thinking about the, the work of the chief scientist in this space. So there's a lot here, but because we don't have a huge amount of time. I just wanted to confirm that it's a really complex landscape um, that we're talking about when we talk about open research, and there are lots of things to be aware of, and you know things are changing all the time. So I'm sure I am talking to um, or preaching to the converted here, but just to give it a quick definition about open research, um, open research builds on the principles of open access publishing to demonstrate a commitment to openness as applied throughout uh, the research life cycle. So that includes methodology, data, code, software, et cetera, as well as publications. So there's a broad range of practices. And there are numerous benefits to engaging with open research and embracing greater transparency and reproducibility um, of research. And these um, include broader dissemination of research with less delay, uh, greater efficiencies in research when data is openly shared and can be reused, and greater transparency, um, which improves research integrity. Practicing open research and publishing also helps comply with funder mandates and institutional policies um, as open research is becoming more of a focus for those. At UQ, we promote open research as part of a responsible approach to research practice. Um, we know that the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research articulates broad principles that can uh, that characterise an honest, ethical and conscientious research culture. Um, I've just included the sort of um, the key words from, from each of those principles and I won't read those out, but you can see that um, they align well with the values um, of open research. Um, and in the context of open research, this means, I guess, making available where possible data, methodology and findings so that the credibility of research can be checked and measured. And it also connects to the idea of universities doing research for public good. Um, and if funded by public money, then there's that social responsibility to share back research findings openly, um, which is a, a concept we're really familiar with in the context of open access publishing and thinking about how publishers can double dip um, with hybrid journals by charging both subscriptions and article processing charges. 
Uh, at UQ, um, we support an open and responsible approach to open publishing and sharing of data, publications and education and open educational resources with the infrastructure that we have. So our data management systems support the entire research lifecycle and they're integrated at every stage. The systems and tools cover all the elements for best practice and fair data. Um, so our UQ research data management system called UQRDM stores and manages the data and it's integrated with our repository so that published data sets can be pushed automatically into our institutional repository, which is called UQ eSpace. And then UQ eSpace provides discovery and access. And we have a team in the library who provide data curation services. Um, if you look at this, the bottom uh, left-hand side of the slide, it's a little bit about the integration. So UQ pulls in data from, eSpace pulls in data from a variety of sources and then, then shares it out um, again. So our systems are set up to make it easier for researchers to embrace open practices and adhere to those fair data principles. Uh, our institutional repository also helps support bibliodiversity, which is an important consideration for open research. So in addition to supporting the green open access route for publications, our institutional repository can manage and provide access to a diversity of research works produced at our institution, as well as being critical infrastructure for any research assessment exercises. And this sort of pushes back to some, again, to some extent against the commercial publisher's profit-making approach to open access by offering an, another pathway. When we talk about open research, there's a broader category of open scholarship that's useful to consider in the context of communicating to academic staff about all things open. So UQ Library, as many of your institutions would, has a textbook production service called Open Textbooks at UQ. It's based on the Pressbooks platform and it allows our academics to um, produce open textbooks to support their courses. And by doing so, realizing the benefits um, of offering free access to learning resources to their students. Those main benefits being the money saved by students when they don't have to um, purchase a textbook and the sort of potential for better learning outcomes that comes as a result of everyone in having access to the same learning resources for free for, right from the start of um, semester. As this service grows, I think it's a really great value proposition for the university in terms of the benefits of open, open access and open research, as well as providing um, an improved student experience. Um, and another thing that we've do, been doing recently um, across UQ is ad, advocacy work. So about 18 months ago, we set up a group with membership from across the university to raise the profile of open access at UQ. The group was called the Scholarly Publishing and Open Access Working Group, or SPOAG, as we refer to it. And we've recently updated our terms of reference and our name to incorporate a wider remit of open research. Um, so we're now the UQ Open Research Working Group. The group has buy-in from high levels from across the university and our membership includes our provost as the group sponsor, the PBCR as the chair, as well as including our university librarian, two of our library directors and representatives from the research office and all faculties and institutes across UQ. So in the first 18 months of running the group, we've raised the profile of the read and publish deals within the UQ community. Uh, we met with the chief scientist and provided written feedback um, on the proposed national plan for open access. We um, provided input and feedback on a revised UQ open access policy um, and helped with the development of a guideline to underpin the policy and to support researchers to sort of implement it um, and adhere to the open access requirements of their funders. We've discussed the NHMRC open access policy changes and any potential implementation issues. Um, and just generally ra ra raised awareness across the campus about the complexity of following open access pathways to share research. We've put on events during Open Access Week and UQ's Research and Innovation Week, um, just generally raising the profile of all things open. And more recently, we've been discussing UQ signing DORA, and we've also expressed the need for UQ to have a really well articulated position on open research, and we're hoping to progress both of those further this year. So now I'm going to hand over to um, Elena, my colleague, to tell you about our journal search tool. 
I'm going to continue to control the slide deck for a minute while Elena introduces the tool and then I'll unshare and Elena can give you a, a demo. Elena, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I will spend a little bit of time just telling briefly what uh, the journal search tool is all about, but then we'll go straight into the demo. So um, we had a soft launch for this tool in May 2022. Uh, so the idea behind this search tool was actually um, to create uh, a possibility for researchers to make strategic decisions around their publishing choices. So um, from so we have some statistics around the use of this tool, um, and it was around 18,000 um, unique user um, cases uh, from till May 2023. So it's from the beginning of the year till now. So what it allows to do is um, conduct various searches um, in a very unique, I think, and very convenient way. So people can search by journal titles, key, keywords, subject areas. They can identify journals easily uh, with open access or prepaid options, which again is very convenient. Um, and also they can understand and refine the results based on different indexing or journal metrics. So um, another really good feature of this tool is the possibility to create um, the favorites list, especially you know, for early career researchers or mid-career researchers where they're not quite sure, possibly they don't have their favorite journals yet. So they can go um, and as assess different publishing outlets and create um, uh, the list of favorites that they can easily go back to uh, within the um, UQE space environment. And also, uh, of course, they can investigate, as I, I mentioned, all the journal uh, metrics, uh, the quality indicators. So the next slide. Justin. So um, what we've discovered, so once the written publish agreements came into existence you know so it was we saw it as a possibility to extend the functionality of this tool and these you know uh, written publish options uh, the journals that are part of this written publish agreements were actually added to the tool as well to provide easy access uh, to the information of whether or not the journal is included it's a top level sort of information of course we highly encourage our researchers to engage broadly um, and go and read the agreements themselves um, to be able to understand what conditions really apply to a particular journal. Um, so I will probably not, I'll go straight into the demo from here, Justine. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me just go in. Um, okay. Sorry, I just want to confirm that you can see. Um, you can see, okay, perfect. Um, so this is the UQE space environment. Um, so there, our researchers need to log in to be able um, to see the journal tool is very easy to identify. It's on the left hand side menu. So it gives a short description of what the tool can actually do. So, and now I want, as I said, you know, to demonstrate a few things. So let's say a researcher actually knows what they're looking for. They know a specific title, so they can search by the title, but, oh, okay. We had some issues today with logging in. <laughs> um, okay, load me out, apologies. Okay, so I think I'm in hopefully for better. So I am looking for a um, journal of, sorry, biosocial science. Okay, so I'm, I'm going in with a, a very specific title and you can see there is an exact match which I can click on and investigate if the journal is actually the right journal uh, for me. So you can see all the information here is the, the, the first block of information, as you can see, is um, it's a metadata about the journal itself. 
which you know can provide an idea for the researchers of um, you know when the journal started, how often it is published, whether it's uh, print or it's both online and print. So it has a, a short description. Also, there is an option to actually uh, to click on this link and go to the Ulrich's web page and see whether there was any change of titles. You can see who the publisher is. There is a very convenient and easy option to investigate open access pathways as well, and especially when it comes to self-archiving and green open access. So these links uh, will not be clicking, but they take directly to the journal um, data on um, Shogba Romeo, so people can investigate their choices. Um, the next block of information is uh, journal metrics. You can see, so we pull in information about um, the citation index and how the journal actually ranks in different subject categories. Again, very convenient. At the click of a button, researchers can investigate and compare certain choices. So we can see another um, in block of information, again, journal metrics, uh, whether or not it will be a good uh, journal of, of choice for the researchers. Also, they can see where the journal is actually indexed, which is quite convenient. It is both in Scopus and PubMed. We know for sure that some researchers, for some, it is extremely important um, uh, if the journal is indexed in PubMed or in some particular database. We also can see where the journal is listed. So all these, you know, um, specialized lists, for example, it is part of Research Excellence for Australia list. Um, and as well, so the, we can see that it is in a part of written publish agreements. The link will take directly Researchers take directly to the call website so they can investigate further what are the conditions of the agreement. And also they can see how many researchers or, and who uh, in particular published in this journal uh, just recently, who are the UQ authors that can potentially, you know, um, early career researchers can maybe go and have a chat with and ask about their experience with the journal and their publishing flow and uh, peer review process and so on. So it's an opportunity to network as well. Okay, so this little star actually will allow researchers to add the journal to the, um, to the search list. So I will now go back and very quickly show you almost out of time elena all right thank you sorry um just very quickly want to show you um a few other options so i'll just go i'll cancel this church search sorry um and we'll go to artificial um if it picks it up so you can see you can actually add searches by title or keywords you just click on this and it, uh, it will add to the search or if you know the for code uh, you know, uh, for your research or the subject category you can also add those searches if you wanted to so let's click search it will now give me a big list of uh, various journals the journals are sorted by quartile uh, ranking from the top from uh, quartile one to four. We have a really convenient um, help system here as well, you know, where, you know, open access, for example, different pathways explaining uh, how open access can be achieved. Um, the results can be refined here by uh, particular journal lists, for example, and we are trying to use the terminology that are known uh, for the researchers. If someone is looking for the journal that is listed in ABDC list, so they can see there's two journals that are A and A star, also two, so they can sort of sort uh, filter by these categories. And also we did mention the open access, um, the ability to actually see um, if I cancel this and go back to the big list, we can see uh, open access options. So, for example, if researchers prefer 
or you know so consider choosing um green open access pathway so it may be important for them to know what the embargo period is so for instance um if it is okay with the funder uh, it meets the open access criteria to have a journal um, self-archived within 12 months embargo so we can see this particular list has 200 uh, 102 sorry uh, journals and so on and if immediate open access is part of the mandate of, of the funder, so there is also options here. We have also included um, immediate open access without charges. Here we are talking about diamond open access. So uh, another really great feature I want to show, uh, you can actually compare the journals here. So all it needs is to highlight the journals and then compare selected to see um, the journal quality indicators. Um, and so you are able to actually pick the ones that would be suitable for you. Um, and also you can go by one journal or by a list of journals if you know them to try and add them in bulk to my favorite journals list. So next time, um, you know you need oh sorry I didn't add I actually clicked on the journal but yeah so there is an option to basically add uh, um, a few journals in one go to the favorites so next time researchers need to publish their manuscript they can just go to the list of my favorites and so go with the selection they've done before so this is briefly, really briefly, of what this um, journal search tool is capable for. Um, there's continuous improvements there. We have amazing team um, looking into how to expand the capability um, of this tool. So we found it really, really useful for researchers based on the feedback that we are receiving.